Good evening. I am so excited with uh, my uh, show tonight uh, because my guest is a very special one. She was born uh, in Ireland in Cork in a farm. Uh, she grew up there. She was uh, struggling with her dyslexia and uh, from 2003 she opened a very successful and inspired and inspirational business. Uh, her business is a huge success. Uh, she is today one of the most famous delivery food guru in the United Kingdom. Uh, her clients from royalty to celebrity, but uh, includes normal people, exactly like you and me, are all happy with her uh, approach of a healthy diet. She's a wonderful wife. She's an absolutely amazing mother of uh, four uh, fabulous daughters and uh, she's doing so much charity work on top of her uh, busy schedule with her family uh, with her business uh, and um, tonight she found uh, 10 minutes to talk with me good morning Jennifer and thank you so much for finding uh, time to speak with me and I cannot tell you how happy I am to see you again well, it's great to speak to you, even if we're like not right beside each other and we can't give each other a big hug. I give you a virtual hug. <laughs> oh, that I love that, and I cannot wait for the real one. Um, <laughs> so uh, we know everybody knows that you are such a busy woman. You uh, you have a, a lovely big family. Uh, you have your business. You have your social life. How do you cope with all this madness around us? Uh, well. First of all, I'm not actually sure that um, coping would be the word that I would use to describe myself at the moment. Um, I think I have moments where I stop and I think I'm so lucky. We all have our health. We are in a great place to be isolating. But I wouldn't describe the word to describe my feeling is not coping right now. I think the only way that, you know, my business runs really smoothly and brilliantly because I've got an incredible team. I mean, they are just wonderful and they are doing the, an amazing job. I'm just blown away by how happy our clients are and how wonderful the food is. And I don't know what I do without them prepping food. Even for me, it's, it's remarkable, but overall, I'm finding homeschooling for daughters is definitely the hardest part. Definitely. Well, is the hard for you or for them? You have four daughters. Yeah, it's probably hard for me because especially with the five-year-old, I'm worried that she'll come out the other side of this, not being able to read and not being able to write. And it's, it is nerve wracking. And um, from that perspective, the, you know, it's a different kind of stress. It was not something I ever worried about before because my girls go to such wonderful schools and all of a sudden the onus is on me <laughs> to step up. And that is, and um, that's a lot of pressure. And it's funny because I, I look after the most phenomenal clients, everything from, you know, a, a lot of royal families, a lot of celebrities, a lot of hardworking individuals, so many wonderful clients. But yet, teaching my five-year-olds, <laughs> you know, ch, 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 <laughs> is the biggest challenge I've ever faced. Yeah, but you, all those teachers out there. <laughs> but wait a second, because you prove that you have such uh, an inner power uh, since you start your business in 2003 up to today, what is your business now? So I'm sure that you'll find enough uh, uh, power and enough energy to cope of, uh, with the idea of being a teacher for five uh, smart girls. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think it's, you know, I think we all have to be just kinder to ourselves to get through this time. We have to be kind to ourselves. And I am learning to be more flexible as to what I see as normal. You know, my, my five-year-old would normally be in bed by 7 p.m. And last night at half past nine in the dark, we were still traipsing around the garden while she looked for flowers so she could count the petals on them because that is when she wanted to do her science work. And for the life of me, I couldn't convince her to do it at, you know, midday, which would have been a respectable hour. <laughs> so I'm learning to be kinder to myself and go, okay, the world will not stop turning. She wants to do her science work in the dark that's okay um 
And also, I'm seeing a lot of kindness out there. There is a lot of kindness going around and we have to be kind to ourselves. Um, I think that's really, really important at the moment is being kind to ourselves. Um, and I'm seeing that a lot with my clients and a lot with our business, people just being very kind. And I, you know, I'm trying to practice that with my family as well. <laughs> now we are in a lockdown. Is it more difficult or it's easier uh, to find this balance between what is good, what is healthy, and what can tame the stress, the anxiety, and the temptation of running to the fridge every five seconds? <laughs> well, first of all, especially with the virus going around and being able to fight things, the most important thing is to have your health. Um, and as we know, you eating the right food is going to help you to be able to handle health issues that you have so keeping a healthy gut and eating well but i think the hardest thing people find and i know i'm finding this and you're probably finding the same thing is that we are generally locked down in our own homes so our instinct is to go to the fridge <laughs> and to open up the fridge and grab a snack every so often um, and the other thing that's happening is people are being quite good about fitting in a workout here and there so people will do an exercise video and then they'll all act all surprised because they feel like snacking. Now, snacking is probably the biggest danger during lockdown because people aren't planning for it. So if you're doing workouts, if you're working from home, if you're locked down somewhere, anywhere near your kitchen, I would suggest the first thing to do is to plan ahead for snacks. Prepare and then, you know, put out tasty, healthy things so that they are between you and your cupboard. So when you walk into your kitchen, where we have a nice bowl and in it, you know, lay out in the morning, a little thing with some hummus in it and some nice crudités, maybe some carrots, some fresh stuff, brightly colored, lay it out so that when you walk into that kitchen, it is right there. And that's what you go for first. Because if it's not there and it's not to hand and you haven't planned it, <laughs> dream on if you think you're going to actually do it. Right. <laughs> you want a variety of colors laid out for yourself. Um, so I would be, the night before, I, w I cook too much, say, tender stem broccoli, but I'm mm -hmm. just blanching it, by the way, so it's still nice and tender. And then I lay a little bit of broccoli out. I've got asparagus in the garden at the moment, a bit of asparagus, some red peppers, some carrots, a beautiful rainbow of things. And if you've got a sweeter tooth, you know, a nice little bowl of blueberries, um, a little bit of yogurt laid out for yourself, and you will grab that instead. But if you haven't thought about it beforehand, you're not spontaneously, it's very unlikely you're just going to spontaneously do it. Do and the it more you do it during lockdown, the more you're going to do it in your future, in your life. Uh -huh. um, that's yeah. something that works very, very easy, let's say, for me, for you, for Steve or your husband, how you can trick um, the kids in that. How did you manage uh, your four princesses to... Uh, <laughs> go on that line well some days go better than others but it's all a bit of an obstacle course so when i find that let's say they're having let's say we're having a pasta with fresh made pesto mm -hmm. and prawns for lunch would be a typical lunch around here they love pesto they love pasta what i do is say 15 minutes before before they put their books down i go to the kitchen and I do what I just said, I'll blanch some asparagus. And then what I do, because they all love Parmesan as well. Well, three out of four of them love Parmesan. I grate a little bit of Parmesan on the asparagus. And then I take it around. They're just finishing off their studies. I know they've got, you know, a certain amount of time left. This is the older girls, the younger kid. Obviously, I just... <laughs> but what I... Well, she will help me with this job. And I take the asparagus around and then they sit there and they just eat it. Yeah. And then when they come to the actual meal, I've kind of tricked them into already having snacked on it. So it's almost like an obstacle course. You have to sort of think five steps ahead. Uh, they're going to get hungry at about 12.30. Therefore, at about 12 o'clock, I need to put something within arm's reach that they will like. Um, I have a beautiful tray in the morning and I lay out in the kitchen all the different supplements, um, especially for my teenagers. Um, mm -hmm. The essential fats as well are really important. Moody teenagers in lockdown is no fun. So I put out all the supplements and then they, they go, oh, I'll have that, I'll have that. Or sometimes with my third born who's got a lot of allergies, I'll lay out, um, I'll put our smoothie maker and beside it I'll put chia seeds 
and I'll put I'll put out suggestions for her and then she sees it and she goes oh if I put these in and I press it goes pink and and her favorite straw will be there so it's almost like an obstacle course you're putting things out that will get in their way on their way to the cover and I don't want to to finish before um, uh, talking a little bit about the fact that uh, you are not focused only on your family or on uh, on your business. You started to get involved in some help that you give to the community. I saw uh, some of your posts. I saw the support that you give to one of the charities that uh, one of your daughter is involved. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess. Well, first of all, I'm continuing to support all the charities that we've supported over the years. So we do a lot of work with um, the Ronald McDonald House, mm -hmm. which supports families who've got children in hospital. And we've continued delivering fresh fruit to, to the Ronald McDonald House. And we've continued things like that. Um, but what we have started doing, um, and at this point, we've given away hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of meals, probably actually thousands of meals. I should get someone to do a count, but we haven't got to that. We're so busy doing it. Um, we have a Help the Heroes campaign um, where people submit heroes who then get complimentary boxes of food. And it's not just, they don't just get a lunch or something. They get breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks every day for, um, for three or four days. And they love it. It makes their lives so much easier. Um, but the other thing that we've been doing, which um, I guess my daughters are doing the hard work, I shouldn't really um, lay claim to it. Um, my daughters have been fantastic with this. So they, our local hospital is actually short of scrubs, can you believe? Mm -hmm. Not enough protective equipment. So the girls have been busy sewing. In particular, my 14-year-old Lily has been busy sewing. She's become quite good at making caps for doctors. It's quite impressive. Um, it's more complicated than you'd imagine. <laughs> um, but yeah, they've been really busy um, making scrubs for the doctors. Um, and I think the doctors are loving wearing them because especially when they put them on, they know they've been made with love. I think they, um, you know, they can see how much love has gone into it. So that's right. something I've been really supporting within our community is, is making scrubs. So yeah, that's, that's anything we can do to help. You know, I, I'm not a doctor. Um, I'm a mother, I can help by feeding people, I can help by clothing people. That's, 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 <laughs> brilliant. that's my contribution in our time right now. You, uh, you uh, grew up in, uh, in Ireland, in Cork, and uh, I uh, have a lovely photo with you when you are very young. Uh, and I want to, uh, to, to make an exercise. By miracle, uh, in your tree house, by the way, your tree house looks fabulous. Uh, Thank in your you. tree house where you are now, suddenly behind you, uh, Jennifer from that time will appear. Uh, and uh, you have 30, 40 seconds to talk. Uh, what today's Jennifer will tell Jennifer from that time back in Cork? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I'd probably just give her a bit of confidence because I know that she felt it's hard being dyslexic especially at that age and I think I would just say to her you you know you are incredible I would I would say you know keep you know get to know your friends your family keep those relationships they are the most important things you will have is those relationships with your with your family the relationship i had with my mother was incredible with my sister susan so i would i would try and impart to her that she should have confidence in herself because especially at that age when you're learning to read and write and and you're thinking in your head, I'm not stupid. Why am I not getting this? <laughs> it was a it was a very hard time for me, and I I think that that's what I would sort of impart on her is enjoy those relationships with people, and just you're all right. You you're going to do all right. <laughs> that confidence for the future. You see, I what I'm would not... you say to yours? What I'm sorry. This to... this is my interview. I am the one. <laughs> put in the question yeah i will answer to all our question when i will be in the tree house after the lockdown finish yeah? <laughs> thank you so much for your time this morning give a big hug to uh, the girls and to your husband please stay safe and uh, hopefully we'll see each other as soon as possible
You too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.